Stacy Sims, and we are back with more Nameless. And last time we kind of went, we went down the first bad ending. So we played a lot of the good path, but then we kind of went back, skipped through some stuff, and got the first bad ending where Yuri switched jobs and went to be a man whore. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of like the insinuation they gave. Like he just, and it, that makes me so sad. Like we just, us being kind of like angry at him made him just like disappear and go off to be a hoe. <laughs> We're kind of awful in the bad paths, you know? We abuse Yin Ho, we make Yuri be a hoe. I mean, geez. Lance turned back into a doll. He basically died. I mean, Jesus. Good Lord. Not not to mention T, you know, trying to kill us. I mean, that was a little... Woo. Gets interesting. Anyway. Chromie Doll's new face. Meet Yuri from the adult line. Can you see his sensitive and mature face? Yuri feels like a man, and he'll not... And he'll become the perfect man that meets all your desires. Those deep eyes that capture women's hearts, that sweet smile, he'll become the man of your dreams. Every woman's dream. Don't you want to see a beautiful male doll? But please pay attention to Kroby Doll's new adult line. And yet he's got creepy pickup lines. I mean, I guess. You know, he's got to learn. He's got to learn. I'm supposed to be a sex symbol. That's not what you want. I'll be whatever you want. Man. They all have complexes, these poor things. Anyway. <sighs> I knew was, I, if I faked John, I was going to really on, so I just forced a really on out. I stretched my arms without tidying my scruffy hair. Today is a peaceful day on the weekend. I want to sleep more, but pretty soon... Um... Master, are you awake? I know Yinho will come in and wake me up like this. Yeah, I'm up. Breakfast is ready, so hurry on out. Okay. As Yino opened the door, I smelled something delicious. Thanks to that, I no longer felt sleepy. Ugh, <sighs> I should get up now. Oh, yeah, see, now I'm gonna actually yawn from seeing the word What is wrong with that? Seeing the word yawn makes you yawn, damn. I stumbled over the box I put under the bed. I looked at the box and realized yesterday's night wasn't a dream. I pinched my cheek slightly. Ouch. It hurts. It really wasn't a dream. Hmm, come to think of it, I hurt myself like this once before. <laughs> oh, when the dolls became human. I think yesterday I was shocked just as much. It was strange to see Yuri be so serious and mature. It was so unexpected. It was like I was dreaming. I nervously opened the box. The heels were still there. I secretly relaxed. I carefully tried on the heel on one foot like yesterday. It fits. How did he know my size? They say the prince in the fairy tale went around the whole town with the glass slipper to find Cinderella. I imagined Yuri wan uh, wandering around holding the glass slipper. Am I Cinderella and Yuri is the prince? My face turned red at what I couldn't help but mutter. I'm so glad I'm alone in the room. I know I said it, but it's so mushy. I should just go out and eat. Oh, you're here. Good morning. Hey. Master, sit here. You still look sleepy. Did you go to bed late? No, that's not it. I didn't sleep very well. I pulled out a chair. Lance glimpsed at me. Something happened yesterday. You seem a bit excited. It may just be my imagination. Huh? Oh no, <laughs> I'm just... I avoided answering and looked at Yuri's room. But I can't see Yuri. Did he leave first? I asked T, his roommate. T shook his head. No, he's in the room now. I think he's getting ready to go out? To go out? Well, Yuri always gets ready to go out on the weekends. There's no way he'll stay inside to... Will you go out on a date with me tomorrow? Oh, right. I, I should get ready too. Yuri came out of his room just in time. Oh, Yuri, here, have breakfast. Hey, kiddo, and my honey. You're cute today. Yuri winked at me. Cute? I just woke up. But if... But my honey is still cute. You look like a squirrel that just came out of hibernation. 
Did you eat something wrong? Lance finally said something, but Yuri ignored his words and sat beside me, and he started to leisurely eat a salad. I guess you're overreacting since I'm going on a date with my honey today. Of course, I understand. Yuri speared a tomato and held it out for me. I was surprised at the tomato suddenly coming at me, and the rest was surprised at and the rest were surprised at what Yuri said. Lance sharply raised his eyes. Date? Y you didn't have to say that. Ugh. Yuri grinned and shoved the tomato into my mouth. I couldn't continue because of that. Yuri, you're not still half asleep, are you? I'm fine right now. I'd like to say I'm more clear-headed than usual. Date? Are you talking about when a boy and girl hold hands, eat together, watch a movie, and drink coffee? Heroin is doing that with Yuri? You're correct, Red Monkey. Except a date with me doesn't always follow that pattern. Good lord. Yuri grinned at Red. You're not making up stories, are you? You tend to be delusional, you know. <laughs> you tend to be delusional. He's like, well, actually, I'm always late coming home because I just wander around the street corner telling crazy stories to myself. <laughs> T grinned at Yuri and said, His words didn't follow his expression. Saying that while smiling made him more scary. But Yuri laughed it off. Like, it's kind of weird. I feel like this is the right way to go down the paths because you kind of... Like, in Lance's path, everyone... Like, Red was a little bit... Or, trying to get you into the play, but nobody was really chasing after you, right? You go down Yinho's path, and T is a little more like, oh, if you were going to hurt her, I should have hurt her. And you're like, what, 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 what? T, what? And now in this one, he's a little more... It's like, he's getting a little more protective of us as the paths go on. You know, I mean, and I understand it's Yuri. I understand. But it's a little... It's weird. It's like we're getting more and more of him kind of encroaching into the, like... Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh And he's the next one we go down, so it's kind of interesting. It's slight, and you probably wouldn't know it. Like, it wouldn't make a difference if you did it otherwise. But it just seems like it's slowly progressing more as we go this way. Interesting. Uh, but Yuri laughed it off. He really looks happy. That's a bit harsh. Yuri, are you dragging Master into this? Yinho said strongly. I think everyone's misunderstanding a bit. I guess considering Yuri's usual attitude, they're right to do so. But since it's different this time, I should now... Yeah, if you keep harassing her, I'll treat you like an enemy. Oh my my. Oh, oh my, oh my. I wish you guys would stop reacting like that to something my honey and I already promised. Already promised? That she'll go on a date with you? Lance asked as if he couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yuri answered confidently. At his reply, everyone stared at me. I barely swallowed the tomato in my mouth and said, Yuri's right. Lance is like, what? Lance stopped talking. He looks like somebody just told him his puppy died. Your dog died. What? <laughs> my honey, leave everything to me. I'll make this, I'll make this a day you'll never forget. A day I'll never forget. I feel nervous about that. I mean, after what happened in Lance's path, you should. Because it's Yuri, for God's sakes. There is no way you're not getting depanced in this one. But I can't take back what I said now. Besides, yesterday, Yuri asked me out with sincerity. I wanted to trust that for now. Did heroin really say yes? Red looked at me as if he couldn't believe it. She said yes. My honey, right? You didn't forget the intimate conversation we had last night, did you? What do you mean intimate? People will misunderstand if you say that. The boys look incredulously at me. Anyway, I did say yes to the di- I mean going out together, so don't take it the wrong way. Master? You know, looked at me with worry. This is literally how everyone reacts in Code Realize when you're like, I'm in love with Impey, and they're like, are you sure? Did he drug you? <laughs> I fucking love it. Ugh, I was telling them not to make that face. I feel bad thinking about Yuri's reputation. It's hit rock bottom now. Meanwhile, T and Lance were muttering something. We should get a GPS tracking device. No, they don't have that. Don't they have that in smartphones? I think there will be one if we search for it. GPS? What's what's that? All right, Lan All right, Lance. I'll download it on her phone. I'll feel safe if it updates us every five minutes. There's nothing we can do with the help of modern technology. Oh, there's nothing we cannot do with the, with the help of modern technology. Lance, you really are smart. You know, I think it'd be best for me to just follow them. 
Why don't you take the chance and just put a name tag around your neck? That sounds nice, too. Um, guys, they're getting more violent by the second. They'll end up locking me in a room and not letting me go anywhere. I'm not being sold away or anything like that. Don't mind them, honey. They're just full of jealousy right now. Yuri waved them away as if chasing away flies. Lance's face hardened at seeing that, and T sighed. <sighs> anyway, don't trouble her. What are you talking about? She's my princess for the day. You need to trust me more. I'm your teacher, you know. So you're a teacher who's hitting on a student now. Can I report you to the school? No, should I report to the police first? Hmm, what's wrong with dating? It's a free country. <sighs> Everyone stop. I stopped eating and stood up. I'm very thankful that they worry about me. But I don't want them to think bad of Yuri because of it. Of course, considering Yuri's behavior, I completely understand where they're coming from. But thinking of how Yuri was yesterday, I don't think he'll take me someplace strange. Everyone, don't worry. I should go and get ready now. T seemed to have more to say, but I ignored him and came back to my room. Thankfully, T didn't stop me. All right, then I'll get the car ready. Yuri followed me and said, and he came right beside me and whispered, See you in front of the house. As he whispered so only I could hear, I remembered how he was yesterday. I feel my ears going red. I hurried into my room to hide it. And should I get ready now? The high heels in it sparkled. I felt my heart beating. They're still uncomfortable. I barely walked to the front door and saw the limo waiting for me. It's fucking hilarious. I guess we're riding that today. What else are you going to ride? People will surely stare if we ride that to downtown. But thankfully, at least the windows were tinted. That said tainted, but tinted. Yuri waited for me in the front of the car and opened the door. As I got in, he went to the driver's seat. I really feel like I'm being escorted. Welcome, princess. Welcome to the carriage of love. Ha! <laughs> carriage of love? What's that? Yuri was greasy as always. But today I didn't feel so bad about it. Let me put on your seatbelt. Forget it, I can do it myself. The princess doesn't have to do anything today. Leave everything up to me. Um, Yuri stretched out his long arms and put on my seatbelt. He was totally blushing. It's kind of cute. All right, that's done. Hmm, your shoes look nice. Uh, Yuri glanced at my shoes and smiled. I thought he was going to do something weird while putting on my seatbelt. But unlike what I expected, he just started driving. Now, sh where now? Shall we start our date then, princess? Along with Yuri's words, the car headed forward smoothly. The car went through the traffic light and headed towards downtown. I only saw Yuri drive to school before, so it was big. It was a bit new to see him drive today. He must know how to drive pretty well to go through unfamiliar highways without any trouble. The car continued forward as we chatted about this and that. And after some time, we arrived at... There are so many people. Yuri led me to the women's section of the department store's high fashion corner. Even the luxury corner is crowded. I can't believe there are this many rich people. There were long lines of people standing in front of the show windows. My honey, look at this. Huh? I turned around to find Yuri already pulling a top from the rack. How is this? I think it suits your skin tone. He naturally held it on me. But instead of the top itself, I noticed the price tag. I couldn't help but look at it. But Yuri didn't seem to mind. He was just smoothly picking out outfits. Did he always date women like this? He just became a doll like a month ago. I mean, human a month ago. Let's not think about how many women he's wooed in that time, okay? Because that's just horrifying. I was startled at my own thought. Why? Why am I suddenly thinking about other girls? I shook my head. I decided to have fun with Yuri today. Let's not think that. How about this skirt? My honey always wears dark clothes. I think wearing bright, bright clothes like this will be nice. You know, to freshen up. I glimpsed at the price tag dangling on the skirt he pulled out. Oh my god, how many zeros are there? As I had to hesitated, surprised at the price, Yuri seemed confused. Hmm, don't you like it? Then how about this one? Before I knew it, Yuri picked out a huge pile of clothes. He, he wants me to try on all of that? I felt like sweating. Wait, before that, if Yuri chose them, are they all priced that way? I glimpsed at the price tag on the next blouse Yuri handed me. Oh my, 
That has another zero more than that skirt. In the meantime, Yuri approached me again with a new pink jacket. What are you doing not changing? Hurry and try them on. Oh, try this one too. Um, Yuri, what? Do you see something else you like? No, it's just, uh, you know, um, I'll, I'll just try them on. Yuri cared enough to bring me here. I couldn't just flat out refuse. I'll just try them on and not buy them. Let's not take things so seriously and just have fun. I'll forget about the zeros when trying them on. Whew. Here, try it on. The dressing room is, um, that way. Yuri forced me into the dressing room. I changed into the outfit and came out. Aw, oh my god, that jacket's so cute with the flowers on it. How, how is it? As soon as I come out of the dressing room, I see my whole figure in the mirror. I felt like someone else wearing things I normally don't wear. Hmm, all right. This next. Yuri nodded and handed me the next outfit. I feel overpowered. I used to choose clothes for Yuri when he was a doll. I feel like Yuri's treating me like a doll and playing with me. Is he having fun dressing me up? I changed to different clothes and hesitated, but came out of the dressing room. These, I was going to say, the CGs for him better not be all of us in different clothes, because... Yeah, okay, good. Look at him just sitting there all proud of himself. Yuri was sipping orange juice a sales girl gave him and sitting down with his legs crossed. Yuri silently looks at me. Uh, is, is it a bit awkward? He didn't say anything, so I asked him, a bit embarrassed. It was a stranger design than the one I tried on just before. Looking at Yuri's reaction, he must not like this one. I hesitantly opened my mouth. Is this dress too short? I think, wait, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to say the clothes are too expensive. Yeah. I think this is too expensive. Actually, all the clothes in the store are too expensive. <laughs> My honey, money's nothing important. What's important is whether or not you wear a piece that suits you. Then you think about the money. That's a nice thing to say, but it's unrealistic. <laughs> Seeing me complain but not completely refuse, Yuri smiled. He really looks pleased. You really look like Cinderella today. How about dressing up like this every day? Then I'll be happy every morning. Stop exaggerating. Not at all. Yuri said with a serious face. I saw myself in the mirror, still wearing a floaty dress. I was never interested in things like this. I'd never have tried this on if it weren't for Yuri. But after actually trying them on, it was unfamiliar, but still cool and fun. I felt glad to have followed Yuri. Of course, it's a shame it's a price I can't handle. Pretty. My face turned red at his compliment. My face in the mirror turns red, too. Hmm, I guess I do seem a bit pretty right now. Yuri stood up. You're actually dangerously pretty right now. Yuri came by my side and whispered. His sweet voice rings in my ear. I don't have to see to know that my ears are turning bright red right now. I quickly backed away from Yuri. A anyways, I'll change back and come out. I went into the dressing room and fanned my face. Did Yuri see my face get red? I ignored my embarrassment and quickly changed back. I should quickly give up things I cannot own. I might really want to own it if I wear it for long. Besides, since Yuri said all those things, I felt disappointed for some reason. Phew! I felt like I was someone else for a while. I took the clothes and came out. Yuri was waiting for me. Thank you, sir. Have a good day, sir. The salespeople bowed to us as we left the shop. We didn't buy anything. Do they always bow like that? The employees must have received strict training. Oh, thank you. I bowed too, feeling a bit sorry for not buying anything. Yuri dragged me away. Now, next. Yuri pointed at my hair. My hair? I wanted to take care of my honey's hairstyle. Of course, I'll pay, so don't worry. What? But... I mean, there's a way, like, it's not like, oh, let's just go out and have some fun. Dress he really is dressing us up and changing us and playing. And it's like... Do, am I not good enough for you the way I am that you want to get me new clothes and change my hair and like it's one thing if you were like I need to change up my style but I don't know what to do and he's like oh let's go out and do it but he's more like let me decide what you should look like feels a little awkward I mean I know he's just trying to be nice and lavish us with like 
things that women normally like, like shopping and getting our hair done and shit. And like, but uh, it just it feels it's a little awkward. Like, do, are, are we not good enough for you, or like what, Yuri? Come on, you're being a little superficial here. Let me at least do that, and it won't change that much. We'll just trim it, so don't worry. I honestly want to pick out some makeup products for you, but I won't since they might ruin your milky skin instead. Let's leave that joy for later. All right. Yuri listed his plans. He looked really happy as he rattled on. It won't be so bad to let him do whatever he wants today. There, there's a fine line in that statement. After that, I got my hair done at a famous hair salon. Yuri explained a lot of things to the stylist. He smiled at me the whole time I was getting my hair done. I didn't know why he was smiling at me. I felt fresh after having my hair trimmed. I haven't felt this fresh in a long time. Yuri seemed pleased too and headed on to the next course. Where are we going next? Oh, I like the fact that they actually do. They like style little, they style her hair a little bit. I kind of almost wish he forced, like bought her that outfit. So we'd have like everything totally different. We're like, Hey, all the rest of them like me for me. And now we're totally different. We come out with like this fucking like blonde hair and shit. Like, where are we going next? Should we go and get some tea? Tea? When he said tea, Banjul flashed through my mind. Let's go to Banjul. You mean the cafe tea works at? Yeah, you said you liked the tea there, Secret Garden. Yuri didn't say anything. Was he not liking it because tea works there? I was worried about them not getting along these days. Tea won't be there, right? Today? No, today's the weekend. He only works during the week. Come to think of it, it's been a while since I went there. I do miss the place. They have good cake. Noticing that I was still thinking about Banjul, Yuri clicked his tongue. You're supposed to go places you don't normally go when you're on a date, darling. But I like that cafe. Oh, there are harps displayed in the cafe. I thought of all the charms of Banjul. Yuri might like it if he sees the elegant decorations for himself. Besides, they had instruments, so I thought it would suit Yuri. Harps. Hmm. Yuri seemed to show a little interest. Yeah, let's go and get Secret Garden. I suddenly missed the scent of Secret Garden. Yuri thought for a moment and silently turned the car. I guess it'll be okay if there's no intruder. Interloper. I don't know, the lemon fucking, the lemon candied tea, to me, just sounds so much more appealing. Like, and we entered familiar streets. As I opened the door, I smelled this familiar sweet scent. Welcome! Oh, you came before, right? Are you on a date today? Zion welcomed us enthusiastically. Of course, his voice is a little more deep than that, as we heard at the end of, like, what's his face? Uh, at the end of Yinho's. He must be good with faces. He remembered me. Anyways, can't believe he said date. It's more embarrassing to hear someone else say it. Oh, I'm sorry if you weren't. It is a date. Please tell T that. Yuri grinned and said, w What? Why does he want him to tell T that? T would never be pleased to hear that. Hello, duh. Girl, you're so crazy. Oh, you must know T then. You guys look good together. I'll tell... Uh, then I'll lead you to your seats. Zion took the menu and led us. Hey, look at that. I like the workers here. Yuri whispered to me. He sounded satisfied for some reason. We didn't even look at the menu and ordered two cups of secret garden. I like the workers here because they say we look good together. Oh my god, she's like, I don't understand. Oh, derp, derp. This is that tea then, huh? Yuri sounded excited. Yeah. Oh, how do you like the place? Hmm. It's an interesting cafe. Yuri said while looking around. Along with the piano and harps, antique furniture and decorations filled the place. Yuri's gaze stopped at the instruments for a while. He seemed to like it. Yuri turned his gaze to me again. It gave me a nice smile. How was your day, my princess? Stop calling me princess. Someone might hear. So what if they do? You are my princess. You talk nice. You're like that when you see other girls, right? What other girls? I don't know what you're talking about. Stop pretending. I know you meet a lot of girls. He must have gone on several dates like this. I remember him naturally escorting me throughout the whole day. I did feel good the whole time thanks to it, but if he did the same to other girls, then that's a different story. I felt a bit gloomy thinking that. Don't delude yourself. Yuri grinned. What does he mean, don't delude yourself? I didn't understand and just looked at him. 
I only say these mushy things to you, princess. What? I was too surprised to take back my hand and just stared at him. Did he mean what he just said? Normally, I would have automatically thought he's lying. But this time, I felt like I wanted to check him somehow. Here are your cups of tea. Thank you. Two cups of secret garden were laid down on the table. It smells good. Yuri said while smelling the cup. I scented it too. Whenever I smell this, I think of you. As Yuri took in the smell, I thought for a moment. Should I ask if he really means what he just said? No, let's not. That's a bit embarrassing. Hey, let's ask about something else. I've been wondering, why do you like hanging out with girls so much? Hmm? Yuri stopped drinking the tea and asked me. He looked like he had no idea what I was talking about. You know, at the Academy. I know that you five are popular. But you know, I feel like you never refuse people's looks and attention. Especially if they're from girls. Look at the look at his, how big his eyes are. He's like, I'm trying to look innocent and sweet. Is it bad to be generous? Then T must be an evil villain. Of course T is kind, but I feel T is just being nice. But when I look at you, you really seem to share your feelings with them. It's different? Yuri never refuses the affection and attention he gets. He doesn't even seem to be uncomfortable because of them. And he lets people fantasize. I think it's your habit. You seem to like every girl in this world equally. That's a fun way to say it. With that, both of us stopped talking. Did I ask something stupid? But I always wanted to ask him this. I wanted to know how he truly feels. There was a silence between us for a moment. What is Yuri thinking right now? Yuri sipped his tea again and opened his mouth. That's probably because I was made that way. Made that way? My concept. The perfect man every girl desires. If my honey felt that way about my actions, it's probably because I was made that way. From the moment I was born, I was everyone's perfect man. You said before that I don't know people's hearts. That might be true. But I don't know how to react to sincerity. But I know how to give love equally. As you just said. Yuri laid down his cup, a cup and opened his arms. It's like this. I'll give you as much love as you want. Yuri said that dramatically like an actor and folded back his arms. He looked a bit sad as he said that. But what's bad about that? Doesn't the other feel safe because of me acting like that? When someone gives me muffins or chocolate, I know that it's for that person to take them. I shouldn't refuse the love people give and just give back accordingly. But that doesn't really work with you. What? After giving his long explanation, Yuri abruptly stops and looked at me with a strange expression. He looked sorry and a bit disappointed. You don't feel safe because of me. I think I trouble you more. Yuri said that and held the cup to smell it. I, could see his fa I couldn't see his face because of it. Yuri wasn't talking complete nonsense. Was he bothered by what I told him? Besides, Yuri did really seem to feel sorry for me. This tea smells really good. Yuri... <laughs> it's weird. I must. It must be my concept to share my heart equally with everyone. That's a bit difficult with you. Honestly, it was from the first moment I opened my eyes. To be exact. Yeah. From the day you gave me this tea. From that moment, I wanted to give you something special... I couldn't give to anyone else, Yuri said in a calm voice. We were close enough for our knees to touch. I heard a sincere voice, and my heart started to beat fast at what he said. I thought I would be so happy if you take all the things I give you. I always want to give you new things. It's strange. Yuri, I feel so much happier when I see you smile. Oh, look, he's blushing. Yuri's face turned a bit red. No way. Yuri was showing me a side of himself he never showed me before. He looked a bit nervous as he talked. He kept on fidgeting. That, that does it mean he's being serious right now? So I hope you take it. What? <laughs> Yuri just slightly laughed at my question. 
After hearing what Yuri said, something came across my mind. Maybe Yuri never tried to be liked by someone first. He always likes people who like him, and he treats them nice, but... I thought maybe he never really tried to win over someone's heart. Like his concept, he just reacted to what the other wanted. He never truly gave someone his heart. So he never truly wanted someone to give him their heart too. And that's so... lonely. What are you thinking so hard about? Huh? Oh, nothing. I think I understand him now. I now know that he doesn't have hidden motives when he's nice to all the girls. And I know that although he's always around people, he feels empty inside. After that, Yuri took me to a fancy restaurant. I've only been to places like this when my parents came home, so it was very strange. I never thought I'd come here with someone else than family. And I never imagined it'd be Yuri. We filled our stomachs with steaks and headed home. The limo stopped in front of the house. The night was already dark and the streets were empty. We're here. Are you tired? No, I had fun. I really felt like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> felt. So not now. Well, I'm Cinderella, aren't I? I have to turn back to a maid when it strikes midnight. Oh, that's actually cute. I didn't really put that to do. Into the whole shoe thing and the Cinderella thing and the princess thing, but it just, the maid, when she just said the maid, I'm like, oh, ah, snap, Spacey's dumb. I didn't, duh. Oh my God. That part of the connection kind of like flew over my head and just smacked me upside it. The Cinderella in fairy tales turns back into a maid, but she still becomes a princess in the end. <laughs> Yuri took my joke. We both smiled happily. Then go ahead. I have to go somewhere right now. Right now? Where? It's already past eight. The night sky glistened behind Yuri as he said goodbye. I think he had... Oh my god, he's probably an actual fucking limo driver driving people around in the limo. That would be fucking hilarious. He's got a second fucking job. I really wonder if he doesn't. And, you know, we assumed he was a man whore, but maybe he's, like, actually got, like, a legit second job that's not man whore. I don't know. It's pretty late. Where is he going? A place a young lady doesn't have to know about. It's already late. Wouldn't it be better to go tomorrow? You obviously are clueless. The night is just beginning for an adult. For an adult. Yuri felt distant again. <laughs> Cinderella is cute, even when she pouts. I didn't pout. What? You still want me after hogging me the whole day? I can stay with you if you want, but can you handle it? <sighs> Yuri hits on me again. I didn't give in and complained. A teacher running around late at night. What would the students learn? Running around? <laughs> Anyways, well, I won't stop you. But don't be too late. Everyone worries including you. Hmm. I turn around, not wanting to say yes. I ignored Yuri and headed home. Don't worry. I won't be too late. I heard Yuri's loud voice from behind. Yuri's voice rang through the empty streets. He sounded like he was laughing. Phew! I'm back. Guys, I'm back. As soon as I opened the door, Yinho came running towards me. Master, you're here! Oh, Master, your hair! Yeah, I'm but What's wrong? You know, widened his already big eyes. Master, you look so different. R really? It feels the same for me. You know, his eyes sparkled. And you smell good. Oh, I went to the cafe earlier and the tea scent must have gotten on me. Phew. I'm just glad you're back safe. I'm relieved too. While well, Yinho noisily greeted me, tea came out of his room. Did you get your hair done? I wonder where you went. And I smell tea. I can tell you when I can tell where you went without the GPS. <laughs> T looked really relieved. Again, I realized how bad Yuri's reputation is, but I decided to laugh it off for now. Oh, heroin, you're here! Red munched on a piece of bread and came out to the living room. But what did you do outside? You got a lot of packages. Oh, you changed your hair. Red stopped eating and stared at me. That's why they were thanking Yuri. I knew it. When they were like, thanks, blah, 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 he probably like every single thing she tries on. We're buying. I guarantee you he bought us all those clothes. Or at least a bunch of them. You know he did. Packages? I have packages? Yeah, we got a pile of boxes for you today. They said it was from a department store or something. Department store? Packages from a department store? 
I never ordered anything. As I stood there looking clueless, T led me. Aren't you tired? Here, go to your room. We left the packages inside. Okay, thanks. Do you want something to eat? I can cook something up right away. No, no, I ate with Yuri. He took me to a restaurant. All right. T put on an odd face for a while, but soon returned to his usual self, as he was kind enough to lead me to my room. Then go in and rest. Yeah, whatever, Mom. Okay, thank you. After thanking T, I went into my room. What's all this? Beside my bed were a bunch of shopping bags. They were all stacked together. I saw at least ten. These are... clothes? And they were the clothes I saw at the department store earlier. I saw the label and knew for sure. They were all the pieces I tried on earlier with Yuri. I clearly took them off and left them there. Why are they in my room? I never bought them. No way. So I hope you take them. <laughs> did Yuri buy these? When the hell did he... He must have paid for everything while I was trying them on. Yuri would definitely do something like this. He bought a limo one morning. <sighs> I can't just take these as gifts. This is literally a shower of gifts. I felt flustered to th see things I've never seen before. Not to be more exact, things I never had any reason to see in my room. Should I just return these? But I shook my head. He paid with his card. So without his card, I won't be able to return these. Did he intend all this when he paid? I felt confused. <sighs> After staring at the pile of shopping bags, I perched on my bed. No matter how many times I blinked, the shopping bags didn't disappear. There's only one thing I can do when I have this much to think about. I should write in my diary. So many things happened today, I don't know if I can write all of them down. But it'll help me organize my thoughts. I ignored the shopping bags on purpose and sat at my desk. Let's see, today... Hmm... I don't even know where to start. I have to stay up all night if I want to write everything that happened today. I let out a sigh and held my pen. So after getting my hair done, I went to Banjul with Yuri. There we drank Secret Garden. <sighs> it's never going to end. Whatever, I don't know. <sighs> In the end, I didn't write even half of what happened today. I just closed the diary and stretched my arms. I thought again about how things that hap about the things that happened today. I felt like a character from a TV show. I've seen soap operas like this on TV from time to time. The rich, handsome male lead falls in love with a normal girl and changes her appearance head to toe. Then their lives change and they live happily ever after. The Cinderella romance story that's as old as time. But that commonplace story still enraptures a lot of girls. And according to my experiences today, I'm no different. I would have scoffed at those stories before, but I felt excited when Yuri actually treated me like a princess. Did I really become a Cinderella of those stories? And in order to really become one, I need... True love. I think about the conversation I had with Yuri at Banjul. I feel like now I know how Yuri feels. And I think I can understand him. There's several kinds of sincerities in this world. The way Yuri gives his love equally to everyone can be sincere too. But when I heard that, I felt sorry for him for some reason. He seemed lonely the way he can only know that kind of love. Did he mean it? Yuri talked as if he felt something special for only me. My heart beat fast at what, I, at what he said. But if... I... I would get hurt if he wasn't being sincere. Get hurt? I was surprised. I came back to my senses and shook my head. I felt a bit dizzy. Jesus, what am I thinking? Is it because so many weird things happen today? <laughs> I must be tired. I should go to bed. Feeling embarrassed, I hurried and jumped into bed and covered my whole body with my bed sheet. Ugh, I feel embarrassed for some reason. I don't think I'll sleep easily today, too. We won't bother. Invitation. Um, what we will do when the starts, though, is read the... Ooh, diary. We gotta read our diaries. Um... Okay, so we already read... I think we already read this. People stop caring. Uh... Why did he write about the chocolate? Yeah, no, we read that. I run already the chocolate. 
The hairpin Yuri gave me, if someone asked me whether I like it or not, of course I'll say I like it, but why did he give it to me? I'm puzzled. What happened at the music room today was pretty humiliating, and I'm upset when people call me the maid. It's all because of Yuri. That's what I thought, but when he said sorry, everything melted away. I just stared at the pink heels Yuri gave me and the hairpin. My heart jumps like an excited girl. Today I had a date with Yuri. He asked me out so suddenly yesterday, but I have to keep my promise. We first went to the department store. It was my first time trying out such expensive clothes. I was always so poor trying to collect dolls, but today I felt like Cinderella. I couldn't believe what I saw in the mirror. It wasn't the only place we went to. He even took me to the hair salon. I got my hair trimmed and my hair hasn't looked so nice in a long time. It felt really good to be treated well. After getting my hair done, Yuri and I went to Banjul. We drank Secret Garden there and talked. I think for the first time I got a glimpse of how lonely Yuri really is. He was released with a concept of loving everyone. The love Yuri gives to everyone might not be real if you think about it. I couldn't sleep very well. After that date I had with Yuri, the hairpin and the heels, and the things Yuri bought me at the department store, they feel so far. I don't think I even suit them. Yeah, that's the end. Did you wait long? Here you go. It's Yuri, the one you ordered. We issue a certificate to ensure it's an original. Uh, what's your name? My name? Yes, we put the name of the doll's owner on the certificate. If you're planning to give it as a gift, tell me the name of the receiver. Oh, no, it is a gift, but it's a Christmas gift for myself. Oh, I see. There are a lot of customers who buy the dolls for themselves as Christmas gift. Ha <laughs> Could you tell me your name? Sure, my name is... All right, here you go. It's a certificate with your name. If you have this with you, you can always request for repairs. Thank you. The Yuri type you just bought is a doll that was released as the perfect man all women dream of. So he has a much more mature and masculine face than the other dolls. Really? Because his face looks very beautiful and delicate to me, but that's okay. You'll surely be satisfied when you open the box at home. Okay, thank you. Christmas wasn't far off. The streets were decorated with Christmas lights and I heard carol songs everywhere. Hmm, I knew it was the adult line. But this is really heavy. It was much heavier than the other dolls I had, had, I had at home. I knew, it was a, I knew it was big, but I didn't know it would be this heavy. I kept on bumping into people on the streets with my huge shopping bag. And I, I again had to stop walking and change arms. Oh, it's so hard to give myself a gift. I ended up stopping in the middle of the streets. My exhausted side turned into a white fog in the cold air. Christmas carols echoed everywhere. It was the first Christmas I, after Grandpa died. Before, Grandpa used to prepare Christmas gifts for me. But this year is different. I wanted to fill that empty spot somehow. So I decided to give myself a gift so it would at least feel like Christmas. Of course, my favorite present is a doll. Yuri, when we get home, I know the first thing I should say to you. Merry Christmas. Ugh, I'm late! My socks! Where are my socks? I felt my head spin as the clock ticked away. I was busy. I was busy as it is, but I couldn't find my damn socks. You put it at the second drawer in your closet. Really? I didn't see it. Here, here, master! You know held on tightly to the socks and came running out of my room. Thanks, you know. You're the best. I love you. Uh, I hugged Yino tight and hurried to the front door. After I let him go, Yino stood there with his face red, but I couldn't care about him. Oh, my things! Did you see the thing I was holding onto just now? Are you out of your mind? Here, you put it on top of the television. Lance followed me to the front door and held out the shopping bag. He was frowning. Thanks, Lance. Uh, nag me when I get back home. I'm really late. Oi, you're already late. Can't you just take your time? Red, who was leaning on the sofa, raised his head and yelled toward the door. That was an unconventional suggestion, but I'm worried for the owner's safety to let her do so. Positive that teacher isn't not normal. I wonder how he became a teacher. Curious how the academy selects their teachers. <sighs> why are you looking at me? I didn't intend to. Why do you, why? Do you feel guilty? Huh. Anyways, sorry, my honey. Of all times, my limo had to be under repairs right now. No, why are you sorry? Anyways, I hope the repairs don't cost much. I'm worried. Harry's limo broke down recently. I heard there was a problem with the engine. Anyways, the limo's in the shop right now, but they said it'll take some time since it's a rare model. It's fine. They said it's nothing serious. But I need a car to take my honey to the academy. Should I just buy a new one? Yuri talked as if he was choosing his breakfast. That's ridiculous. 
Do you think a limo's some doll's eyelashes? You can buy eyelashes for them too? Creepy. <laughs> Why don't you take the chance and get in the habit of taking the bus? Nope. I would rather not go to school than ride the bus. So stubborn. Ugh, darn, I really should go now. Guys, see you at the academy. Master, be careful. Be careful. Don't fall down. I left the front door as the boys waved to me. As soon as I came out, I ran to the bus station at full speed. <sighs> why do I have to suffer like this in the morning? To be honest, there was a reason why I made such a fuss in the morning. To start the story, I have to go back to when I woke up this morning. <sighs> Ugh, what? Who's calling me at this hour? An ad. Yes, hello? Hair dryer. Hair essence. Hmm, and what else? Hello? Excuse me, but who is this? I'll need shoe polish, too. So annoying. Should I say no right now? I have to think. Uh, um, hello? First, get all the things I've just mentioned and come to the infirmary in 30 minutes. Huh? Wait, wait! Who are you to call me at- Don't even think about being late. If I'm late because of you, I'll have to go through this again. Yes, if you're late, I'll use you for my next experiment. He hung up. Wait, what was that? Anyways, the infirmary? Wait! That was Mr. Eugen? No way! Think about it. Why would he call me in the morning? It's definitely a prank call. But it was very much like Mr. Eugen to abruptly hang up after finishing his business. Again? Oh, it's soy now. Yeah, hello? Hey, what happened to you? Are you alive? Huh? What's all this about? It's only morning, you know. That's what I wanted to ask you. Did you do something? What? Mr. Eugen called me and asked for your number. And in this early hour at that. Mr. Eugen called you? How? I'm in the student government. Our numbers are written down in the directory. I think he saw my number there. Seriously, I almost had a heart attack when I got his call in the morning. I asked him why he wanted your number, but he didn't answer. Plus, his voice was more creepy in the morning. Are you okay? I didn't hear what she said. So that really was Mr. Eugen. So, so if I don't arrive at the infirmary in the next 30 minutes, I become the next sp specimen? So I, sorry, I have to go. I think this is an emergency. What? Are you okay? It's not an emergency. It's Mr. Eugen. It's never an emergency. Never. Mr. Eugen calling me in the morning. This is so not my day. The bus to the academy arrived at the station. It was still early, but the bus was still packed. Huh? The bus is normally empty at this hour. It's still early, so there should be less people. Uh, why are there so many people? Why? I got on the bus wondering why. I soon found out the reason after listening in on the bus driver's radio message. The previous bus broke down. So people who couldn't get on that bus got on this one. <sighs> well, this is really not my day. <sighs> Mr. Eugen, I'm here! I barely got here on time. What do you mean? You're 30 seconds late. Please, forgive me. Huh. Anyways, did you bring everything I told you? Yes, here you go. I caught my breath and handed him the shopping bag I brought. <sighs> hmm. Well, you brought the right things. Wait here, I have to go to the restroom. Huh? Oh, okay. Mr. Eugen took the things I brought and left the room. I was still panting like hell and plopped down on the infirmary bed. Barely able to stand up. Ugh, thank God, but what's going on? After getting off that packed bus, I ran across the playground at full speed. I felt my muscles creaking and screaming for suddenly overworking them. But why did he call me? There were so many questions I wanted to ask Mr. Eugen when he comes back, but I soon shook my head. He would never give me proper answers. No, he would never. Instead, I don't know what he'll do to me if I ask. They say ignorance is bliss, huh? I got down from the bed and went by his desk. Mr. Eugen's lover, Beatrice, was standing there. What is that? A veil? Beatrice always shines because Mr. Eugen carefully wipes her clean every time. That sounds so fucking inappropriate when you think of how gross his relationship with that skeleton is. It's her duty to stand quietly by his desk and watch all the kids who come into the infirmary. Plus, she makes the place spooky. But today, Beatrice was wearing a large veil that covered her face. Actually, not her face, but her skull. But what's this veil? 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know. He was asking for shoe polish, and all of a sudden, I'm like, is he going to marry a skeleton? And I thought maybe it goes back to he had to pick a bride so they won't take the skeleton away, but now the skeleton's wearing a bride, so he's going to marry the skeleton. This is really fucking weird. The moment I was about to touch her veil... If you don't know how to blow off her steam, you better stay still. Oh, Mr. Eugen, why do you have this... Oh my god. Mr. Eugen closed the door and slowly walked inside. Mr. Eugen, what are you wearing right now? A black suit and a blue tie. For some reason, his hair was cleanly tied back, too. Mr. Eugen looks a bit... like Yuri right now. Of course, he feels completely different, but he looks like a proper adult. The suit is always so uncomfortable. I don't know who made these unnecessary rules. I'm going to refuse anyway. Can't I just wear whatever? Mr. Eugen frowned. He was complaining, but he still looked handsome in them. I've never seen him like this before. No, I don't think anyone in this academy saw him like this before. Mr. Eugen, where are you going wearing that suit? What? Oh, I guess I can tell you. Since I have something else to tell you today. What? What does he want me to do now? I suddenly felt nervous. No, just pretend I didn't ask you that. I need to leave the infirmary at lunch today for an appointment. The patients can just take whatever medicine is on the shelf, but the problem is Beatrice. What? She's never been alone during lunch, so today you have to be here and talk to her for me while I'm gone. Why would I ever talk with a skeleton model during the sacred lunch period? I mean, why would I not? Yep, don't worry. I saw his eyes glare at me behind his glasses. Uh, I can't even ever beat Mr. Eugen because he's so scary. I silently lamented my wretched life. I have no idea why today is going so badly. Uh, leave Beatrice to me! Are you going somewhere far? Mr. Eugen would never leave Beatrice in someone else's hands. But asking me this favor means he has to do something that's much more important. Huh? No, it's nothing like that. I'm just going on a blind date. I see you're going on a- What? I ended up shouting out loud. My mouth dropped. Did I just hear wrong? Mr. Eugen looked calm. Be quiet. If you don't, I'll give you the honor of being the living specimen for next month's medical experiment. Mr. Eugen frowned as he covered his ears with both hands. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. But if I didn't hear it wrong, Mr. Eugen, you're going on a blind date? Yes. A huge alarm just went off in my head. It must be true, seeing him answer so confidently. It doesn't make sense. The great Mr. Eugen going on a blind date, and he actually dressed up for it. I now know why he wanted a hairdryer, essence, and shoe polish from the morning. He was getting ready to meet a woman. But it was a bit weird. I thought Mr. Eugen was completely devoted to Beatrice. I didn't understand how he could go on a blind date while Beatrice is still here. Or maybe he's more normal than I thought he was. Just, uh, that sounds scarier, actually. Mr. Eugen, um, if you're going on a blind date, does that mean you're leaving Beatrice? What kind of nonsense is that? Did you eat something bad? Do you think I'd betray Beatrice? But you just said you're going on a blind date. Doesn't that mean you're going to see another woman? You only know one side of the story. I'm going in order to protect Beatrice. Someone threatened to harm Beatrice if I don't go on that date. That was more shocking than the fact that he was going on a blind date. Who in the world would threaten Mr. Eugen? No, sorry, dear. Who would threaten a skeleton model? And it's actually working. I was curious who made him yield like this. That person must be great. Threatening you? He must have some major guts. Or else he would never provoke Mr. Eugen. Mr. Eugen fixed his glasses and said... He looked very uncomfortable. They definitely have some nerves. I can't even control them. Them? It's not just one? Yes, it's them. My family is uselessly big. Family? I heard something unexpected come out of Mr. Eugen's mouth. I guess he has family, but I never knew he'd be tied to them. I always thought he ran away from home or something. Your family set up the blind date? Yeah. Who else do you think would do something like this? No, I, um, thought your colleagues or friends made you. I did say it, but I immediately realized it didn't make sense. Not even a colleague or a friend can make Mr. Eugen go on a blind date. I understand they're making you go on a blind date, but then what's that? I pointed toward Beatrice covered in a veil. I felt sorry for her somehow after hearing the whole story. If she sees me dressing up to see another woman, she'll feel upset. 
even if she knows the whole story. If I cover her like this, she won't have to see me. I'm being horrible for Beatrice right now. I'm a bad person. Mr. Eugen said in a sad voice. But I didn't see the tear-jerking soap opera here. I just saw an extremely handsome man talking to a skeleton model covered in a veil. Things I get to see. If you feel that bad, why don't you dress normally? Do you need to dress up if it's just for the sake of it? If it's just about me, I could just wear my favorite white gown. But I'm not... But am I not Beatrice's lover? Oh, God, that's so creepy. This guy is so creepy. I kind of love this little fucking creep. I... What in the world were they thinking when they wrote this character? Like, what's the creepiest thing we could think? Yeah, that works. Like, I mean, I just... He amuses the fuck out of me, don't get me wrong. Like, this is... Like, I just... <sighs> I'm going to refuse, saying I've already found the love of my life. But if the other person laughs at me, that is insulting not me, but Beatrice. To put simply, I'm proving that I'm a man fit for Beatrice. I can't let the other piece of person think Beatrice is in a relationship with a loser. Mr. Eugen's glasses twinkled. He was talking nonsense, but it was still cool. I don't think anyone would underestimate a skeleton model's taste just because you go out wearing a white gown. I barely stopped myself from saying this. I don't know about anyone dissing Beatrice, but I guess if you dress up like that, she won't say you were impolite. Beatrice must be happy. Or rather, she might actually fall in love with him. Mr. Eugen looked really handsome in the suit, so he'll obviously be liked. Of course, she won't if she knows what he's thinking. Of course, a man is an animal who knows how to dress up for the woman he loves. I thought it was usually the opposite. That is ridiculous. A man starts to display his charm only when the woman he truly loves comes to him. A man who only pursues beauty and looks is fancy on the outside, but is simply an empty shell. I immediately thought of Yuri. He's right. He looks good on the outside, but inside, he's empty. I felt bad after thinking about Yuri's loneliness. If Yuri's feeling that emptiness right now, it means he has no one he truly loves. Uh, he loves you, dear. Is that why... I can't help but compare Yuri with Mr. Eugen, who's sparkling in front of me. The huge wall I felt while talking with Yuri a couple days ago, I don't feel it at all for Mr. Eugen. It is odd, but Mr. Eugen does genuinely love Beatrice. I was a bit touched by his love for Beatrice. Will Yuri ever love like that? Yes, dear. Then I have to come back when lunchtime comes, right? I looked at the clock and noticed it was already time for class. I did come earlier than usual, but time flies quickly in the morning. Oh no! Oh no! Look at the time! I guess I'll have to ask you a favor today. Remember the things I've told you and make sure she's not upset when I'm gone. I wanted to ask how can I check if a skeleton model's upset, but I stopped. I'll have to leave as soon as lunch starts. I'll lock the door and I leave. I'll leave the key to the janitor, so all you have to do is ask him. Okay, then good luck with the blind date. It won't take long. I'll get it over with as soon as I can and come back. So don't go anywhere and watch out for her. Okay. I left the infirmary and closed the door. Mr. Eugen and Beatrice will probably share each other's passion until lunchtime comes. Oh my god, do you not realize what that sounds like? Oh my god, that's why he locks the door. And that's why he polishes her so much and has to keep her clean. Oh, gross. Dear God. What does he do to that skeleton? Oh. Oh, my God. <sighs> it looks like it'll be a tough day. Let's just go to class. I walk towards the classroom, already exhausted. Spacey, what happened? What? There was no limo today. Oh, that... The ice prince and the chick rode the bus instead of the limo. It's nothing. It, it It's what it is. Mr. Yuri's limo broke down, so everyone came separately. The bus station will be crowded for a while. When does it get fixed? Will it take about a week? Why are you asking? If they're taking the bus for a while, I want to take the chance and make my dreams come true. A chance like this doesn't come again. Dreams? Stumbling in the bus and falling into T's arms. She's really going to hate us when we go down the T-path. Soy's eyes were serious. She bore no shame about what just came out of her mouth. It'll be really competitive, you know? Oh, no, that was Shimby. It'll be really competitive, you know? That's why I have to plan ahead. So when does the limo get fixed? I'll be better off with more information. It'd be nice if you could plan ahead like that for the exams. Ugh, shut up. 
So when will the limo get fixed? I don't know and I don't care. I won't be taking the limos anyway. The limo anyways. I realized after taking the bus this morning. I think I'm better off just taking the bus. Huh? Why? You took the limo to school every day. I'm tired of everyone staring at me. I don't think I'll ride it even if it gets fixed. And how about the others? Well, I don't really... You don't know? What a shame. So I slouched her shoulders. On the other hand, Shimmy quietly patted me on the back. Do you feel happy taking the bus? I honestly feel much better on the bus than in the limo. Shimby seemed to choke up a bit and stroke my hair. Why are you blowing away your chance? I would never give up on the limousine. So I scolded me with a weak voice. <laughs> my chance? I smiled awkwardly. But something bothered me more than being teased as the maid or taking the bus to school. Did Yuri come to school okay? I kept thinking about him saying he never wanted to win over someone's heart. Well, he never had thought about it. It's not saying he never did. After that, I kept on feeling frustrated and sorry for some reason. And I kept thinking about him saying he feels special about me. But I don't know what I feel right now. You know, I have two tickets for a concert. Do you want to go with me? It's a concert with the famous maestro. You know, do you have time this weekend? There's a new band gig and I heard it's so fun. You can even get the tickets now since there's... You can't even get the tickets now since they're sold out. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Is this because of the music assignment? You know, looked uncomfortable surrounded by the girls. It was a familiar scene, but everyone looked more enthusiastic than usual. Huh? Is there something going on today? If you go to a music concert, you won't get an F, even if you fail the midterm. Mr. Yuri said he'd give extra credit if we go to a concert. It's an opportunity to get extra credit and a date. I saw the Ice Prince was swarmed by girls in front of the gate this morning. How about you? Me? I thought you'd run straight to T's class. I nodded at what Shinbi said. Come to think of it, I thought Soy would go to T's class first. Surprising. <laughs> I'm not a beginner. T's probably the busiest one among the hot five. So if I go to him now, I'll just become girl number two. I shouldn't hurry and carefully consider my chances. I have to snatch him away like a hawk when all the enemies are distracted. So I took out two tickets from her pocket and gave us a creepy smile. What concert is it? I saw the concert title on the tickets. Let's see. Classical concert for pregnant women. I don't know what Soy's planning, but I hope T's safe. Classical concert for pregnant women. Honey, you know that's not a concert where you go to get pregnant, right? Like, that's not how it's going to work. I'm going to go and we're going to make love at the concert. <laughs> I'm going to have T's love child. Oh, Soy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.